Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about the taste. The taste is the, the feeling or actually the actual taste that the patient can feel in the mouth. And this is actually one of the most typical symptoms that in Chinese medicine and acupuncture theories we are going to distinguish from the different tastes such as the tasteless, the bitter taste, the sticky taste, or sweet, and as well as a sour taste. So different tastes in the mouth can reflect different zhangfu organs, especially for the spleen and stomach. That's because the, the, the mouth is the orifix of the spleen. So from the taste in the mouth, we can see the spleen function. So here we are going to introduce some of the common tastes. First one, tastelessness. Tastelessness or lack of taste in the mouth is mostly associated with weakness of the spleen and stomach. So that's the spleen deficiency or stomach deficiency or cold patterns in the middle jaw dampness in the middle jaw. It can be the coldness or dampness or coldness and dampness in the middle jaw. So that's the pathogens. The tasteness, the patient can feel that in the mouth they don't have any kind of a taste. In this situation they also will have like poor appetite or reduced intake. When they eat something, they also feel less tasteless. So those are the symptoms of tasteless. The second one is the bitter taste. A bitter taste, the patient can feel in the, the bitter taste in the mouth, mostly related to the, the fire, the liver fire, or the, the bitter taste also can be the stomach fire. The bitter taste, and we also need to ask the patient if the bitter taste in the, the in the early morning or in the afternoon, because this can reflect different organs. In the early morning, such as they feel the bitter taste, in the morning about five to seven o'clock, it might be the the excess fire, the liver fire. If the patient feels the bitter taste in the afternoon, especially if after meals, if they have a, a short nap at noon, and then when they wake up, they feel the bitter taste in, mouth, in the mouth. In this situation, it might be due to the stomach and the bitter taste. Also sometimes can due to the hot fire. If due to the hot fire, the patient may have palpitation or insomnia. That's something related to the heart. And when we mentioned the, the liver fire, it also same as the cold bladder fire. So because the liver and cold bladder are coupled organs. So these are these two. For the bitter taste, we're going to separate into two different according to the time. The sour taste. The sour taste can be the food retention. It also can be the, the damp heat in the, the heat in the liver and the stomach. Why be related to the liver, the sour taste? Why the sour taste is linked to the liver? That's because from the five elements, the sour, the taste is linked to the, the liver. And also for food retention, if the patient they eats a lot and the digestive system doesn't digest that well, the patient also may feel the sour taste, especially with the unpleasant smell from breath on the mouth. And the, the liver heat, when the liver heat affects the stomach, the patient also can present with sour taste. 
Next one is the sweet taste. A sweet taste is mostly related to damp heat in the spring or spring deficiency. Why it related to the spring more for the sweet taste? Sweet taste is because the sweet in the five elements also links to the the, the sweet in the five elements also link to the spring. And how we explain the sweet taste in the body? Thus, the damp heat cook the grain. The actually the, the damp heat affects the food we eat, and then the food were transported into the mouth. That's why we feel the the sweet taste. And the sweet taste sometimes com combines with the sticky taste, the sticky feeling. So the, the patient may feel sweet taste in the mouth and also they feel sticky. So this sticky, they can feel the saliva is like an oil or like glue. That's, that's what they feel. And also it depends on the saliva is clear or thick. It can indicate the excess or deficiency. The salty taste, the salty taste mostly relate relates to the kidney, especially kidney deficiency. That's also because the salty the taste links to the kidney from the five elements. A stringent taste. An astringent taste like eating persimmons and related to the dry heat consuming fluid. Astringent taste mostly happens in dry heat, and that's also because of the dry heat going to affect the lung. And astringent is the taste of the lung, that's why we mostly. We mostly think about the lung in this taste. The last one is the sticky and greasy taste. A sticky, the greasy actually is not a kind of a taste, but it's a sticky. A sticky taste in the mouth often associated with the dampness. Sticky, greasy, and bitter. Sticky, greasy, and sweet. So these two can indicate different location. Bitter taste can relate to the liver and gallbladder, but the patient have sticky taste as well. So it's the damp heat in the liver. If the patient have sticky taste but have sweet in the meantime, that's the spring. So from the taste. You can see from different organs and the taste actually this kind of symptoms the patient will tell you directly so from different tastes we need to understand the pathogenesis behind these symptoms such as if you if for example it's a if a patient tell you that they experiencing with a bitter taste and then you need to ask them do they feel the bitter taste in the morning or afternoon? Because this can help us to distinguish from the liver and gallbladder or the stomach. So that's from the inquiry. The, your questions need to base on the previous question. So although we introduce the inquiry one by one, on the chills, fever, on the perspiration, and the different pains and now the different tastes. In our inquiry, we don't really ask them one by one or from the use as a table. Sometimes we will ask the specific question based on the answer from the previous question. Such as here, if a patient tells you that they have different, they have the sweet taste. Then you can ask them is any un, any other symptoms they experience such as the fatigue, 
or coldness in the fingers. So these symptoms are based on the diagnosis in from the sweet taste. You just want to confirm your diagnosis. The next inquiry is sleep. It is recommended to have a six to eight hours sleep per day. So sleep actually occupied almost one third of a day. Sleep, diet, and defecation are three important aspects to understand our health. In order to understand the sleep, we need to understand how we see normal sleep from our theory. Or in other words, how to explain why we sleep, what have changed during sleep. So how we understand the sleep from Huang Di Nei Jing described that the sleep, the sleeping activities that are due to the movement of Wei defensive qi or Wei qi. So when we study the qi theories, we separate the qi into different function. For different function of qi, we give them different titles, such as weight defensive qi. You still remember what's what's weight defensive qi? Not the qi move to the superficial to help us to protect ourselves against the against the pathogens. So for the sleeping in Huang Di Nei Jing, it described that the normal sleep, why we are awake, why we sleep at night, that's because normally Wei defensive qi circulates along, along or in the Yang meridian. During the night, Wei defensive qi circulates in Yin meridian. So during the day, the way defensive qi move to the superficial into the yang meridian. That's why, how we explain why we awake. And at night, the way defensive qi moves into the yin meridian at night. That's why we sleep. So that's how we understand from our theories why we sleep. That's why sleeping the inquiry of sleeping is closely associated with the circulation of Wei defensive qi. Wax and one of yin and yang, abundance and insufficiency of qi and blood, and the zhang fu organs, especially the heart and kidney. So that's why we need to ask the sleep. If the patient presents with normal sleep, then we can consider that the, the, the qi movements still in normal situation. In other words, if the patient presents with sleeping disorder, then we will think about that the, the way it defends the qi or the yin and yang is imbalanced, or the patient may suffer from disorder of qi and blood. That's why we need, we, we need to ask about the sleep. Abundance of qi and blood, yin yang balance, and harmony between the heart and kidney guarantee our normal sleep. So when we ask the patient about the sleep, we always ask about do they have difficulties in falling asleep? Do they dream during the sleep? And other symptoms such they sometimes they can they can fall asleep easily, but they wake up easily as well. Or, or sometimes they can present with very light sleep, sleep, which means if they there's any noise around, they will be awake. So the first one. Insomnia. Insomnia, also known as sleeplessness, refers to chronic in inability to fall asleep or remain asleep for a adequate length of time, which means they don't sleep long enough. 
In mild cases, the patient may present with difficulty in falling asleep, waking up easily or frequently, especially when they have difficulties in returning to sleep at night, interrupted sleep. In some other cases, the patient will tell you that they can't sleep or dream disturbed sleeping. The dream disturbs deep sleep, especially after dreaming, the patient feels tired. This can, consider, this can consider as the pathological condition. Insomnia is a clinical character, character, characterized by poor sleep, sleep quality and quantity. So the duration of the sleep do they feel refreshed after sleeping? Do they feel refreshed in the second day? So these are, if they don't feel refreshed, these are in the categories of insomnia. Then what happens to insomnia? How do we understand the insomnia? So um, to talk, in order to talk about this question, we need to understand the pathogenesis of sleeping or what what's its importance in sleeping which organs are related to the sleeping especially in sleeping related to the heart because the, the heart stores the mind or the spirit so the mind in the heart and during the sleep the mind should come comes to come down and to rest and also the heart governs the blood the sleeping as you can see from here the factors contributing deficiency syndrome including in blood falling failing to nourish the heart mind timidity affecting the heart mind that's actually the, similar to the fear and hyperactive fire that's the heat so why is it says the deficiency of the in blood or even body fluid so the sleeping is very similar to palpitation that's why we have the similar pictures here on the right side the fish again the water the fish and the water and this the there's a fire underneath so that's all what we need to understand what, what we what we need to think about in order to in order to understand sleep the fish is the heart mind or heart spirit the water is the in the body fluid or the heart blood so either the heart blood or heart body or, or heart fluid or in fluid they all in the category of in is a liquid from there they also have the fire that's the heart yang so we got the heart the organ of heart we got the heart yang and heart in so that's all what you have in the heart the heart yang the heart in the water and the fish the heart spirit so in a healthy situation physiological condition these three we in a balanced situation condition also they cause the harmonized condition what does it mean there is the fire we got the fire but the fire is not too strong we got the, the water but the water is not too cold. We got the heart spirit, we got the heart mind, but the heart mind can move, can move freely without disturbed. So that's what happens to the heart in the disorder of sleep. The patient will present with insomnia during the night. They're supposed to sleep, but they don't sleep. 
what happens there that it can be lack of the water here that's why the the fish keep jumping this we have explained in the puppy patient so that's the first situation with the, you, you don't have enough fluids in the in the tank so the fish is the fish is jumping or you got excess of fire so the fire is very strong you're going to cook the water the water become very hot the fish also don't feel comfortable and in the meantime if you got excess of fire if you cook the the pots here you also the water also going to re reduce the similar when you cook the water you're going to reduce the amount of the water that's the result of excess fire also if you put a lot of stones or soil or dust in the in the, in the tank the fish also going to fight because they don't feel good in the environments of the turbid or cloudy water right so these are all the aspects that we need to understand now we go back to our human body from this image the liquid if we don't have enough liquid in the heart that's the heart indeficiency can cause the the heart spirit jumping so during the night the the fish doesn't move smooth smoothly that's why they, they can't sleep or if you have excess heart fire or you have excess liver fire cause heart fire so the fluid is too hot which is the heart heat or heart fire in the meantime the water going to reduce so there's two causes of these two can have the can cause sleeping disorder insomnia also if you cause the excess situation such as you cause the flame dampness or food retention in this similar something you put in the water you're going to block the fish the movement of the fish that's why you also have insomnia you also we have disorder of sleeping so that's all what you need to think about when you see a patient with sleeping you really suffer from indeficiency especially for heart indeficiency you really suffer from the pathogens from emotion from exogenous pathogens or internal pathogens the last aspect you need to understand or you need to think about is the relationship between the fire and the water so the fire and the water what is the relationship the fire apart from the hot fire the water also very important the water except the heart in the water in the heart which organs in charge of the water which organs is very important for the water or fluids metabolism that's the kidney so the heart and the kidney the fire of the heart the, the water from the kidney the balance between these two this balance is the relationship we have discussed in the zhang xiang theory that's the fire and the water the, f the fire from the heart need to warm the water in the kidney the kin the water in the kidney need to reduce the fire in the heart that's the balance of these two that's why we say sleeping it's very important to a proper sleep it's very important to have a proper relationship between the heart and the kidney that's also why in some kinds of treatments we're going to use treatments treatments to balance the kidney and the heart 
The next one is sonnenance. Sonnenance, also known as drowsiness or hypersomnia, refers to a state of near sleep, a strong desire for sleep, or sleeping for unusual long periods. So when we study in the therapeutics, we're going to categorize this in different stage. Here we just give you a general understanding of hypersomnia. So basically means the patient they sleep too long or they always feel sleepy. For mild symptom, it can be they have a strong desire to sleep. For a severe situation, the patient can fall asleep and for unusual long up periods. And sometimes you can wake them up, sometimes you can you cannot. So that's the severe condition. So how we understand the hypersomnia while they sleep a lot? The first one, yang deficiency. In excess of land dampness. So why the yang deficiency? That's because your yang is weak. Your yang qi, the way defensive qi is, is weak. That's why the way defensive qi don't even have enough energy to move to the superficial. That's why it always stays at the bottom, always stays in the in meridian. The yang qi doesn't have enough force to move to yang meridian. Or if you got in excess in in category, the in characteristic is static, quiet. So if you got a lot of in, you're also going to sleep. So that's how we understand the hypersonia. Associated symptoms of spleen qi deficiency. The patient can sleep after meals, especially they feel sleepy after the meals. So when they're hungry, they feel fine, or before meals, they feel fine. And once they have meals, they have their lunch or dinner, after meals, they feel sleepy. The reason why in this, this situation we think that's the spin qi deficiency, that's because when you eat, the, the meals, the qi, the limited qi of your body going to digest the food so you don't have enough qi to keep you awake. That's why you feel sleepy. And in this situation, the patient always feel full appetite. Symptoms of yang deficiency, the patient may feel coldness. They also can have fatigue, but they, for yang deficiency, mostly it's the cold, coldness, cold limbs. The spleen defic deficiency, fatigue, poor appetite, yang deficiency, coldness. So these are the, the laws. So whenever you, you see yang deficiency, you need to reflect to coldness. Somewhere the patient must feel coldness in order to diagnose as yang deficiency. The coldness or pale tongue, qi deficiency, you need to reflect to that the patient feel fatigue. So that, that's how to, how to understand these terms. Qi deficiency, the patient may feel fatigue. Spleen qi deficiency, that's the the function of the spleen is to transport and transportation, uh, transformation and transportation. So which means the digestive function is tired or fatigue. That's why the patient have poor appetite. Or if a patient have a kidney qi deficiency, then you will see this from the theories, the kidney related to the especially for the sexual activities. So if a patient have kidney qi deficiency, they will have problems in the men's or women's health. 
So that's how we understand these terms from until now. After these a few weeks study, weeks study, you should generally gradually try to form this kinds of reflection, mental fatigue and drowsiness after serious illness indicates a healthy qi has not recovered. So this re refers to after a severe disease, the patient feel tired. They always want to sleep. Also from sleep, from hy hypersomnia, we need to dif differentiate the jarredness and comatose. Comatose, that's very severe and this situation the patient cannot be awake be awakened and have unclear consciousness cannot respond normally the drowsiness patient have have clear consciousness and able to respond normally so in patient in a drowsiness stage they sometimes they they also sleep if you ask them, you wake them up, they can answer your questions. They can respond. If you ask their name, they can answer you. But for comatose, they cannot answer you. And that's actually a life a life threatening condition. So when we study the therapeutics, we are going to talk in details details for these a uh, different stage of hypersomnia. Okay, so in this video, we are going to introduce these two: the diet and the the taste and the sleep. Thank you, guys.